Hello, and welcome to Lesson 8 of the Crow Panel Pico HMI Display Tutorial Series. In this lesson, I will show you how to create a temperature and humidity monitoring screen using Squareline Studio. The lesson will be divided into three parts. First, designing the user interface. Second, modifying the sample code. And finally, editing the UI code. Since I have already explained in detail how to add the UI to the provided sample code and modify the sample code according to the board in the previous course, I will not repeat these steps in the second part. If you are confused, please review lesson 6 first. Now let's start the first step, designing the UI. First, find the sample code for Lesson 8 in the course files. This sample code directory does not currently contain any UI files, so we need to design the UI and export the UI files first. Open Squareline Studio. These two projects were created when I was preparing for the course, but for a more comprehensive demonstration, I'll create a new project. I won't go into detail on how to create a UI project, so if you're unsure of the steps or the reasons for choosing certain options, Please refer to Lesson 6 for more information. Once you have opened the software, find the chart component in the Components panel. This is the component we will mainly use in this lesson. Start by resizing it. As I want to be able to display it clearly, I will make it as large as possible to fit the size of the screen. Once resized, look at the Inspector panel on the right and find the point setting in the Chart section. Since I want to monitor 24 hours of temperature and humidity information, I'll set it to 24 points, dividing the x-axis into 24 columns and the y-axis into 50 rows so that the position of each data point is clearer. Next, open the x-axis section and set the primary scale number to 24 and the secondary scale number to 1, corresponding to 24 points. I will then modify the primary y-axis which I intend to use to display temperature information, so I will set the maximum value to 50. However, to ensure a more accurate representation of the data at each point, I will set the number of major scales to 12 and the number of minor scales to 1. Then, move to the secondary i-axis section, which I need to display humidity information, so the maximum value will be set to 100. Again, to more accurately represent the data, I set the primary scale number to 12 and the secondary scale number to 1. Now to the data portion of the chart. To avoid interference from the raw data, I will remove all but one data point. To differentiate between the temperature and humidity data, I set the temperature data to red and the humidity data to blue. After designing the chart style, I would also like to add two labels to show the specific temperature and humidity values, so I would place these labels above the chart. The temperature labels will be color matched to the temperature curve, and the humidity labels will be displayed in a similar fashion. Okay, that's the temperature and humidity monitoring interface I want. Now we can export the UI file for use in the sample code. To export, Click on File and then open Project Settings to set the Project Save Path, UI File Export Path, and an Export Method. Since these settings were covered in Lesson 6, I won't go into detail here. After setting the necessary settings, click Apply Changes, then select Export and choose Export UI File. When you get the prompt of successful export, you can find the required UI file according to the export path you just set and copy it to the sample code folder after you find it. Now we can proceed to the second step and modify the sample code. When you open it, you will notice that the UI header files are already included in the sample code, as are the UI runtime functions. So now I just need to make sure that the display and touch drivers correspond to the board I'm using. If you are unsure how to configure the display and touch drivers to your board, please refer to Lesson 5 first. Also, the temperature and humidity sensors covered in this lesson use the I2C protocol, so I will need to connect them to the board's I2C port in order to get data. I will use the DHT20 library in the software. To install the library, 
open the library manager, then search for D20, select the latest version, and install it. When using this library, please note that you will be using wire, using pins 2 and 3. Let's see how to get the temperature and humidity data in the setup function. I have created a timer to read the temperature and humidity data at regular intervals. The mistimer function is a callback function for the timer with a period of 200 milliseconds. Before reading the data in the callback, it is important to first use the DHT20 read function because if you don't, the data will not be read. This is mentioned by the author of the library on GitHub, so the correct steps need to be followed. Now for the final step. We will modify the UI code to integrate the temperature and humidity data with the UI interface. In the beginning, the temperature and humidity information was printed out through the serial port, but now I want to display it on these two tabs in the UI interface. How do we do this? First, we'll comment out the serial port printing section, then open the US screen, see file, and find the code related to the labels, specifically the ELV label sets function. As you can see, this function is used to set the contents of the label throughout the initialization of the UI interface. So we need to copy it and use it in the midtimer function. The method is very simple. The first parameter is the label object, and the second one is the content of the label. You just need to change it to the string that I have already prepared. For the humidity label, the operation is the same, but note that the humidity information is displayed on label 2. In the UE header file, you will find that both labels are external variables, so that we can use them directly in the mistimer function. Now go back to the US screen, see file, and find the code related to the chart. When using the LVGL library, you can also refer to the documentation provided by LVGL, which contains a large number of function descriptions and sample code. You can refer to these examples to modify your UI code. This is where you will find chart-related content. The top section usually provides an introduction to commonly used functions, while the bottom section contains sample code. Expand the first sample code and you will find a function called setNextValue. Copy this function into the mistimer function, as I will use it to update the data in the chart. Open the US screen, C file, and find the name of the chart object, ukart1, in the chart code, and replace it in the function you just copied. Next, for the y axis of the chart, find series on, which represents the primary i axis. However, you'll notice that it's a local variable, so we can't use it directly in the midtimer function. Therefore, you need to declare it as a global variable. Similarly, the secondary i axis, Sirius 2, needs to be changed to a global variable. Remember to change the original declaration. It is now a global variable, but to use these two variables in other files, you need to declare them as external variables in the UA header file. Now you can use these two variables in the mistimer function. The last parameter is the value to be set. It is used for the axis that displays the temperature. So you should insert the temperature value red from the sensor here. Similarly, humidity uses the secondary I axis, so it needs to be updated periodically. Note that humidity uses Sirius 2. Change the last parameter to the humidity value. Don't forget to refresh the chart after modifying the data. Just add the function that refreshes the chart. That's all. One more thing to note is that the default data allocation space in the chart code is not enough. So we need to modify the size of the array in order to create enough space for the data. Since I set up 24 points, I adjusted the array size to 24 accordingly. Okay, all the steps are done. Next, let's upload the code and see how it works. Connect your computer with a USB-C cable and click on Tools to configure the build information. If you are not sure how to configure the build information for different board sizes, please review the first lesson. Once you have configured the build information, click Upload.
Since the uploading process may take a bit longer, I will speed up this part of the video. Once the upload is complete, you will see the newly designed UI interface successfully displayed on the screen and the temperature and humidity displays working properly, adjusting for environmental changes. That's all for this lesson. If you find this helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.